And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> We've been gone a long time. It seems like a long time. Yeah. Because not much has happened since the last time Pretty we much. did a video. So the last time we had to actually watch the last video to find out where we left off. It's been that long. Yeah. So the last video we left off with, uh, Nightlight had received our part of the contract. So many moons went by. <laughs> Meaning several weeks went by and we continued to not hear anything from Nightlight about the placing family. So in my feeble mind, I began to worry about that. There were lots of situations that were dreamed of. Not, uh, I mean, so, because what happened was, when we originally got the contract, they told us that the contract is good for 30 days. So in my head, I had a clock, you know. And so we got ours in within like 10 days, I think. And then I waited and waited and kept waiting and then it all of a sudden happened that next week was 30 days and so I'm thinking okay what's going on so I invented several different scenarios in my head that their paperwork had gotten lost in the mail um, one of which that uh, one I invented one that the placing family had changed their mind about us and that they were going to let the contract run out on purpose. So, yeah. The mind uh, wanders at times. So, I finally, I, I really was trying not to be needy and contact Nightlight. Um, asking like, okay, what about now? Have you heard from him now? What about now? So, I was trying not to be needy. And in that, it gave my mind time to wander. So, I finally said, alright, it's a week. I'm, I have to find out. So I emailed Nightlight and said, hey, just wondering, have you heard from them? Like, is there anything going on? And they said, oh yeah, we've heard from them. They're having some trouble with the fertility, their clinic getting, I guess, I'm assuming release papers. Um, and so they were having trouble with There's paper. probably a lot of paperwork. Mm -hmm. and, and we saw relatively little paperwork, but I'm sure that there is a lot on their end that we don't even know about because we're not the ones that are giving up our embryos. And so... Yeah. So yeah, so they said, you know, it's going to be, you know, they finally got the paperwork done and they're taking off time at the beginning of next week to go to get their part notarized and so we should get it. So then we kept not hearing about it. So then like the next week, so I was like, okay, great. And they said, it's going to be over 30 days, but we're okay with that if you're okay with that. And I said, yeah, that's great. So we were okay with that. We wish that there had been a little bit more proactive, like, hey, um, just want to let you know that we've heard from the placing family and don't worry because this is a situation like we wish that maybe we'd gotten an email. However, as always, Nightlight was super happy to answer our questions. So I could have emailed sooner um, and asked as well. So, um, and then we kept waiting and still didn't hear anything. And then, so I was getting nervous again. And then uh, finally realized that um, I was probably sinning about this because I had put this adoption as kind of an idol in my mind. And I'm telling you that not because like, oh, look at me, I'm super spiritual that I realized this. But just to be completely honest with you and uh, sh to share you kind of the mindset that I was just totally obsessed with it and constantly checking my emails every five minutes. And so then I had a conversation with a friend and with Tim and was very upset about it. And then I just had to confess that sin. And um, God in his mercy uh, lifted that from my, from my mind. And so the next day I was fine. Like I was just like, okay, whatever it takes is what it's going to take. And I checked my email and then when I checked it and it, we didn't get an email, I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, whatever. So that was definitely a mercy that God had on us. And then actually that afternoon, Tim called me and I said, this has got to be the call. And so he called me and said, hey, we got the, the, we heard from them. So we read the email together and I was at work and I was in the parking lot and that was really fun to just kind of sit there and just kind of absorb that moment of remembering where I was. When we became parents. Legally, officially. We're officially parents. So then we moved right into shipping and they said, okay, great, you're in shipping. Um, it might be two weeks before we have a date for, the, for you because turns out, so Nightlight is kind of the middleman 
and they're actually working between three different entities so it's actually four people who are involved um, and so I didn't understand that at that point but I was like okay two weeks sure whatever so then we heard from them in about two weeks and they said okay um, your embryos are gonna be should be arriving at your clinic in Frisco on December 6th that was last week about 10 days ago so that was like the 6th of November so it was gonna be like an entire month so we've already waited two weeks to hear from them and then it's gonna take a month to ship and so that would be six weeks in the shipping and they say to budget between one month and two months for shipping I think it's up to three months for shipping well they told us originally three right. months but in the email right. they said it takes one to two months yeah so why does it take that long I'm so glad you asked because I have an answer for you oh uh, Ellen why why does it take <laughs> that long to ship embryos so I was getting confused like why does why can't I just drive and go get them she was ready to do it too like I legitimately to ready to get that. in the car and drive it can't to go take pick that them long up. so and then people kept asking me like, I told I told her there were probably some legal ramifications to that so anyway um, they uh, I people ask me so I asked I finally asked my light and I was like just curious why does it take so long people keep asking me and I can't I don't have an answer so it turns out what happens is nightline has a designated tank guy the tank is what the embryos get shipped in it's what that's frozen and that gets shipped the embryos get placed in the tank and then shipped so they stay frozen so there's a tank guy he has to do his part so he ships his tank to the clinic on a Monday the tank arrives at the clinic on a Tuesday so the clinic has to be available on Tuesday somebody at the clinic has to be available to put our embryos into the tank mm -hmm. so then the tank gets mailed or shipped immediately after they are after the embryos are put into the tank and they're shipped to our clinic who, who receives them on Wednesday so basically all three of those people have to be available in their time period in a particular week with Thanksgiving coming up they said it, it's gonna just take longer so um, yeah it requires lots of coordination lots of coordination everybody has to be on the same page which so, makes sense so um, part of that was okay great you know we've got an official date and part of that was actually pretty devastating and um, we didn't tell anybody uh, when we got the the date that they were going to be shipped because I was actually pretty heartbroken about it um, because in the meantime of all of this is going on is that I had um, gotten to go to some doctor's appointments and like do some tests for the um, transfer and like they do a mock transfer and different things to make sure that I'm ready to go and the doctor had said oh wow you know you're ready to ship that's great okay so if they get here this is like mid-October she said, if they get here by mid-November, we could do a, like a December transfer, like before Christmas, because the clinic closes, you know, December 21st, and then they, we don't open back until January 14th. So in my head, I was like, don't, don't expect that, you know, that there's no way that that's going to happen. But of course, I got my hopes up. Like, there's just no way you just don't. So in my head, I'm thinking, all right, there's a chance, you know, how hard could shipping be? Like, how much could go into this? You know, maybe they'll get there. So in my I mean, head, we I'm prime thinking... stuff in two days. So how yeah, hard Amazon is it to ship prime. some embryos? Amazon Prime embryos. That there you go. That should be... Amazon should look into that for yes. sure. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So when she said, you know, they're not going to get there till the 6th, automatically I go, oh my gosh, that means we're not going to get to transfer until January. No. So they're just going to sit for like six weeks because J the, the clinic doesn't open again until January 14th. But I have to be going through um, hormonal um, preparation. preparation. So yeah. I have to start taking hormones for two weeks. And then after two weeks, we have a doctor's appointment to check and make sure that the hormones are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then like a week after that, if everything looks good, then we do the transfer. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, not only can we not do this until January 14th, we actually can't have our sonogram until the January 14th, which means that the next week is when we'll get to do our transfer, or maybe even later. So I'm sitting here, it's the first week in November, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's 10 weeks, maybe 11 weeks 
maybe even 12 weeks before we're going to get to do this transfer. And so I was really, really, really upset. And uh, we didn't want to tell anybody. I told my mom, I, but I texted her. I, I couldn't even tell her over the phone. I just said, hey, I really don't want to talk about this. I'm really upset about it, but I just want you to know this is kind of what's going on. And that's it. That is, those are the, uh, that's it. We have not talked about it to anybody. Um, because everybody has been so amazing, and that's why we didn't tell anyone. Like, you guys have no idea how encouraging you guys have been and how much you have helped to share our joy in this, and you have just said, you know, we're praying for you and stuff. And so in my head, again, um, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to say December 6th, and everyone's going to be like, yay, that's so great, oh, December 6th. And that was going to be really hurtful because I was going to be, I'm devastated that it's going to take this long. And so I didn't want to have to fake being excited about, oh yeah, December 6th, yay, that's really awesome, you know. Um, and then I also didn't want to be like, you know, I'm really upset, you know, we're really disappointed because it's December 6th. Because I knew that people in their kindness were going to say, oh, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to take that long, it's going to fly by. And so I just kind of invented these things that people were going to say and it was really upsetting me. So we didn't tell anyone. So, um, because I think a lot of times people are so kind and encouraging that they jump on it. When someone is sad, they just want to pick them up, which is totally, I think, a natural and a good thing. Yeah. But I definitely think, too, that, and I've seen this happen to other people, and I've experienced it myself, where sometimes the person who is sad does not need to have somebody say to them, oh, don't worry about it, you know, it's going to be okay. What somebody needs to hear is, I am so sorry that you're upset. I, I don't know what you're going through, but I can imagine that that's really hard, and, you know, I'm praying for you. Or hugs or just you know something that validates how you're feeling so uh yesterday two days ago i think i posted um the date on social media and you guys were really great about it and you just said you just said we're praying for you we're so excited for your journey thank you for sharing with us you know hugs and a lot of the women that i have been able to connect with on especially instagram because there's all the hashtags that you can connect with people who are, have either been through embryo adoption or they're currently going through it, um, there's a lot of understanding. And so I have really been very blessed and encouraged by that community of women who have said things like, oh my gosh, I remember when we were waiting and it just felt like forever and you're just watching the months tick by and you're just, it's just, it's so hard, but God's timing is perfect and you know, you're in my prayers. And that's like the perfect thing to say because yeah. it, it validated how we felt, how I felt. And, but then it's also encouraging. So, um, so we're really grateful for that. And now here we are. And I feel like in that amount of time, in the week that we kind of grieved about how long it's going to take, um, we're okay. I'm disappointed. I'm so, of course, do I wish that it was going to happen in a month? Yes. But, you know, it's, it's going to be perfect. And like, I just, I, I know that when we get to the end of all of this, we are going to be able to look back and say, man, it's a good thing we didn't transfer till January because da 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 da, da. Or, yeah. man, it sure would have been harder if we had done da 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 da. And so I know that God has a plan and I know that it's perfect. And so it's just, it's, it's just disappointing. We're just disappointed. And, um, but yeah. And, and sometimes you just got to be sad, like Ellen said. Yeah. And it's okay to be sad. And, and, you know, we went through that and, and now we're letting truth kind of take over and, and come into that sadness and and remind us of, of what is true and that's what ellen talked about god's plan is perfect his timing is perfect and and that's what we're resting in now because that's really all we have at this point yeah and so we're we're so excited like i said we're parents so i'm going to celebrate father's day this year <laughs> no big deal so i have to i have to share a story just real quick so while this is going on uh, i'm a teacher if you didn't know that and um, I, one of my middle school students was talking about the, uh, the TV show Stranger Things. And I said something really harsh, like, if you ruin that series for me, I'm going to flunk you. You know, that's probably what I said. 
And Pro- like literally, probably verbatim what she said. Yeah. So then this kid responded with, "Wow, Mrs. VT, you're like the only mom that I know who doesn't hate Stranger Things." And in that moment, I almost said, "Well, I'm not a mom." And then I realized that I legally am the parent of four kids. And so I just let it go. And it was just, it was kind of a cool thing to just, and I didn't say anything to him about it. I didn't say anything to anybody. I just kind of kept that in my own heart. And I, I mean, I posted something on social media about it. Yeah, but Because November the is hashtag National Adoption Month. No, not Adoption Awareness Month. That's the one. Close enough. Yeah, same thing. So anyway, so it, it was just a cool story that was really fun to be able to just say, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna challenge what he just said because really we are parents. Yeah, so. we are. Yeah, so that was just kind of a fun little anecdote that I just wanted to share with you. So next up is shipping should be December sixth, so like in three weeks, yeah. three and a half weeks. And then after that, we'll start getting ready for the transfer, hopefully in another six weeks. So, soon ish. Yep. ish. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yep. One, one step closer. We're still within a year of when we started this which whole is thing, good. which is insane. If yeah. you think of an adoption taking less than a year. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. So, so, yeah, we will talk to you before then, I'm sure. So, Thanks for following us, and we really appreciate you guys. Bye.